just sort of specifically to remind you what this, what this, um, what this presentation is about. They, EIG asked me to speak about standing out from the crowd through a differentiated and optimized mobile offering, which is adaptable to a range of devices and platforms. So I'll try and keep very focused on that topic and kind of refer back to some of the other points brought out on the panel, panel session. Um, so talk a bit about the company background. Um, I then want to give, give an overall technical overview of the approach we, we had within, within Locus Gaming and kind of the key requirements in creating the service and creating the product. Um, I'll then kind of give you a quick look at the customer journey because I think that really tells the story about how we fit in with all the suppliers and how we kind of put our principles into practice. Um, and, then, and then kind of give us sort of, um, give five minutes on, on the technical architecture at the highest level. I'm, I'm sort of taking it that most of the people here are more on the commercial side than the technical side. So I'll try and touch on the technicalities um, very much with a, with a view to the commercial aspects. So um, a little bit about the company. Um, was formed by myself and another director at Labrooks Online. I'm not going to make any cheap gags about in the days when Labrooks Online made money, because that wouldn't be fair. But, um, uh, um, and and, and our, our view when we, when we first came up with the business plan um, was all about offering a, a first-class product for mab mobile tablets and all the next generation devices. And kind of, as we heard in the panel discussion, sort of thinking about all these devices almost as one, rather than trying to break them up individually, is kind of, is sort of very important. Um, we're, we're based in the UK. We have a license in the Isle of Man. So the UK company has a service, a service agreement with the Isle of Man company, um, which is where the bets are struck and the license is held. Um, at the moment, we're launched under one single brand, which is Jack Gold. We own that brand ourselves. We've got very much a multi-brand strategy, and I'll say a bit more about that later on. Um, and while it wasn't in the original business plan, we're looking at a couple of white label opportunities. Um, we've got 11 employees at the moment, and the really nice thing about the business, the way the product's being created and the systems are being created, it's a very scalable business. So as we add more customers, we'll need a few more marketing people, but really, the only cost you're adding on is through customer service. Everything can be kind of serviced easy, easily in terms of developing, developing the product going forward. Um, and and uh, plug last of all on my intro side, we've, um, we have done well on the funding front. Um, we're, we're funded for what we need at the moment, but there is equity available. So anybody who might be interested, um, please don't be shy. So, I mean, I think, I think as I said, it's sort of um, important to really kind of outline the business principles we started off with, because those principles really drove what we did in terms of creating the technical architecture and the, and, and the product we've come up with. Um, so first of all, as I said in the intro, it was all about delivering the best possible online experience for all devices, all the next generation devices. So not dividing down to iPhones or phones, but right the way through, through every size of screen um, and, and every operating system. We wanted to be able to deploy new brands, and, and at the moment our Jack Gold brand and product is aimed at a very specific market audience. Um, but going forward, we want to launch our own brands aimed at other very specific areas of the market, because I just don't think you can have one service which is, gonna, which is gonna be aimed at everybody who wants to, uh, who wants to have a, have a um, online casino experience. And you know, it was interesting what some of the panel were saying about you know, the real experts in social gaming is how they, they saw very little convergence into real money players. And even within real money players, there's very different types of real money players. And you need a brand and a service that targets those groups individually. And, and we wanted to have a business that was all about the customer and all about the service. So, so you know, IT was, was almost like a given, you know, something we relied upon rather than that 
electorate that drove the business. And, and to that end, there were kind of three critical decisions when we started. So the, over, the overall architectural design, technical design, and that's what I'm going to go into in a bit more detail. Um, but, uh, but, but, but within that, the selection of our partners was very important. And there's kind of few of our partners in the room, so I'll, uh, I'll be careful what I say, but they've all delivered an excellent service. And we kind of, um, you know, and, and having partners who you really feel are working with you and have that flexibility rather than seeing you as a small new player coming in and not making you a priority has been so crucial for us in our development. And of course, you know, as with everything, you know, businesses are driven by the people. So recruitment of the personnel was essential, but that's a bit off message for, for this presentation. So I thought I'd just take you through the, the customer journey because it's sort of fundamental in, in the, the architectural design we came up with. So, so the way it works is if, and we'll talk about the Jack Gold brand specifically. So if somebody wants to use Jack Gold, at the moment they access through a web browser. Um, you know, the question was asked in the panel discussion, how important do you think web, uh, uh, web browsers are versus native apps? And we went very much for a web browser approach, although we will have a product in the app store. Um, so they'll type into a browser, link from Google, link from affiliates or whatever it happens to be. Um, and, then, and then immediately from that point, they will receive a service which is rendered particularly for that device, that size of screen, and that operating system. Um, and, then, and, then, and then from there, they register. They got all the account functionality, all the bonus functionality. And if you like, that's the piece that kind of differentiates us. That's the piece we own. And I think, you know, I think that provides more than enough put with the brand and the marketing to really kind of differentiate your business. And from there, we send them through to third-party game suppliers. And again, there was lots of debate about, you know, is everybody, are all the games too much the same? And, you know, does that not differentiate you? Well, I don't, I mean, I would sort of fundamentally disagree. You only have to walk outside and there's so many suppliers and each supplier has a particular expertise and a particular speciality that, 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 that can really, you know, <coughs> whose games you need to have. And so the flexibility to have a system that allows you both, both contractually and technically to plug all those suppliers in, because that's the clever bit. And again, you know, it's not about the quantity. You don't want to add every game from every supplier, but you want to pick and choose the best games from all the suppliers and make sure those are targeting the specific audience you've set out to target through your brand. Um, and then they return back into our portal to cash out or to look at their bonusing requirements or to look at their gameplay. So I've kind of put a slide together which is sort of kind of at the high level from the technical architecture. Um, but I think the most important thing about the traditional approach and indeed some of the legacy desktop operators, you know, we, we were fortunate in a way that we started from scratch in terms of targeting mobile tablet devices, next generation devices. So the traditional approach really, because it was all about desktop, you know, six or seven years ago, has been the user comes in from the, from the sort of various marketing channels. Um, and then at the moment, their device is detected at that stage. And at that stage, they're sent through to <coughs> one of a number of services, <coughs> depending on whatever the operators manage to develop. So, so you know, traditionally they maybe have, they have one service for mobile that's then squeezed into iPad and you have your desktop service. And the problem with that architecture is each of those platforms, if you ever want to make any changes or any additions or add a new game supplier, you almost have to do it separately for each of those platforms. And that takes up a lot of resource, a lot of a technical headache in, in terms of managing releases. And, um, and the approach we've had right from the beginning is that we have one website from HTML5. And, 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 and so everybody goes to the web website first. And then it detects what device you're on. And that website is built with HTML5 and enough 
responsive design technology in there that actually by just making your changes to that one site, it will then give you an optimized service for whatever device you happen to be on or whatever operating system, whether you're Android or iOS, um, whether you're on a phone size screen or a tablet size screen, and indeed sort of coming forward um, smart TV. And so we're only making those changes once to the core website, but the website has enough, is built with enough responsive design. It works across all those devices um, and any devices that, that, that may come forward in the future. So that's really a sort of top line overview of the technical approach we use when, when creating the service and creating an optimized service for, for, for all the platforms and all the devices. Um, as I said, you know, flexibility is so important. You've got to be able to take the content from all the suppliers so you're using the optimal content from all those suppliers. Um, needs to be optimized, and that flexibility will give you optimization for, for all the devices and all the operating systems. And it kind of makes it cost effective for your team, your team to manage going forward. And I'm delighted to say that the uh, fruits of our hard efforts and our kind of overlooking at the whole, whole uh, technical architecture we won the award for best mobile site in 2013. Thank you very much. Did anybody have any sort of specific questions or? Yeah. Hi, great presentation, thank you. Uh, Simon Lannes from M Fortune. Um, quick question regards um, your conscious decision not to be in the app stores at the moment. I think certainly for our industry, the app stores promote an element of trust uh, within the players. How have you found not being in the app store um, against, I guess, a competitor that has been in the app store? Because certainly from our advertising, we notice you know, 65, 70% better response rates when we send them to an app store than to one of our web links. Uh, and just wondering how you see that playing out. Yeah, I mean, I, mean, I think, I think the simple answer, I mean, I mean, I wouldn't be against being in the App Store anyway. I just kind of think it's not the be all and end all. The effect it's had on the business, I guess I'll only really know until we have our app in the App Store, which sort of depending on the approval process will hopefully be next week, but certainly before we start our TV advertising. And I guess we'll have a more of an idea of what that's done for us. But our marketing has been so around pay per click and affiliates and direct links through. We don't think it's had a big effect because we've done, we haven't done much above the line, but um, we'll know more once we've kind of launched the product, so. Any other questions or, yeah. Hi, Lenka Janouchová from Tipsport Czech Republic. A great presentation, thank you. I have a question about you, about your presentation. You mentioned that uh, you made a conscious decision to have an open architecture, cherry pick different games from specialized suppliers, but actually other operators or providers in the industry say it's not so important what games you have, but what you do with them, and it's about the back office platform and how you manage the players and what bonuses you get, and that's the rationale for signing up with Playtech or whoever uh, who then demands exclusivity. So what do you say to that argument? And the second sub-question is, what criteria do you use to select the best games? What do you have a process? How do you, you know, decide what game is actually suitable to, to your site? Thank you. Yeah. Um, I, mean, I, think, I mean, I think I would sort of agree with the point. I mean, that's the point I was trying to make. If you've got access to all the games from all the suppliers, you know, you differentiate by how you display the games, which games you take, which games you show, which games you promote. So I sort of, I think I'm almost agreeing with the first half, uh, first half of the question. In terms of the second half, I mean, I think the fact of how you do that, how you choose the best games, how you know what games are going to be most popular with your audience, I mean, I think that's almost the trick and the differentiator. And kind of it's about sort of, you know, employing people with the experience who kind of really understand the games, really understand the customer. And, you know, a lot of it will become trial and error. So, you know, you'll launch a game, you know, where you position it, if you position it in the favorite section or 
under which tab, how easy it is to get to, how much you promote it through, through CRM activity can be very important, but it's kind of you know, constantly measuring those games, see what's working, not working, and adjust accordingly. And you've got the ability to do that if you've got a number of suppliers, because you'll know, you know, you'll kind of know which games from which suppliers are working. And of course, the other thing about having a flexible platform, which is something we're doing at the moment, sort of longer term, is you can develop your own stuff, your own unique stuff, but, 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 you, but you know you're never going to have the focus or the team large enough to develop the whole range of products. So you're almost taking the products from third parties, you know, you know, whoever might be better at table games and others might be better at slots, but then there might be clever things, particularly with the newer technologies for touchscreen devices, where you can develop your own product, which can kind of be your standalone, and, and you know that you know, you know, you know if it's successful, it'll probably be copied further down the line, but, but you know, for that first mover advantage, can, you ha can give you the differentiation. I've answered the question. Any more? <laughs> you were uh, fully hooked in. Let's see if my yeah, my microphone is on. So I know um, everyone wants to go for lunch pretty soon, but um, hold on for this last thing. It's going to be good. Um, all right, see if I can get my presentation on this one. All right, so my name is uh, Johan Styron. I'm the CEO of uh, Leo Vegas. I'm absolutely delighted to be here today. Um, not only is it great, obviously, to get invited to these things, but um, Today I get to speak about my absolute favorite topic, which is of course Leo Vegas. Um, so I'm going to get straight to it. Um, this was how it looked not too long ago. Um, I guess we'll have to go three, maybe four years back. It was quite terrible actually. You had to kind of squeeze in with your, your magazine in, in, in the underground. Um, this has changed. And nowadays it looks like this instead. Which I, what I love about this picture is that the the, uh, the newspaper is still there, actually. It's just that no one's reading it. Um, but everyone's actually reading their, um, their smartphones instead. Um, I guess in most cases, news, etc. If we're lucky, maybe someone's playing casino as well. Um, but this is very much what has put us in, in this situation. And, and looked at it from, from yet another perspective, uh, which is uh, the smartphones versus PCs. Um, the smartphones has since long outgrown the PCs in numbers. Uh, so this is Q, uh, Q1 2012 versus Q1 2013. Um, not only are the, the, the smartphones selling in, in much larger numbers, uh, but it's growing rapidly as well, while PC is declining. Um, well, I guess pretty much everyone in this room is, is in the iGaming sector. Um, now, Leo Vegas is absolutely focused on, well, the, far, the smartphone part of things. And obviously, as you can see, uh, that makes quite a bit of sense. Um, so just shortly about today's agenda, um, I'm going to talk a bit why, about why I'm here. So pretty much put into context what has Leo Vegas achieved. Um, furthermore, how did we achieve this? And I'm going to talk a little bit about what we're going to do going forward as well uh, to keep this going. So um, first of all, what is Leo Vegas? I'm sure some of you might have heard of it, but, but certainly not everyone. Um, from a branding perspective, what we've done is that we've taken the playfulness of an Apple iPhone, the playfulness, the usability, etc. cetera. And, and I do want to point out at this stage that we don't only off, uh, offer our product on Apple. It's, it's of course, Android, uh, even Windows Phone, and, and, and PC, and, and tablets as well. But We've, we've created a, co a product that we've taken that, all of that usability and, and what's nice about that, and we've combined it with the thrill of Vegas. And that is, that is what we try to create. And put more into numbers, and this is quite amazing. So three out of four of our customers arrive by a mobile and sign up. This actually is not included affiliate customers, which you know is, is pretty much still stuck in the, in the web uh, side of things. Um, but even including affiliated customers, still 50% of our gameplay is done via mobile. 
Um, what is also interesting about these uh, players that does come on uh, in via um, web is the fact that a fourth of them move over to mobile. They don't only try our mobile product, but they actually move completely over uh, to mobile and stay there. So once they've experienced our mobile product, um, they realize that it's best. Um, this is the level where we've kind of reached now. So we're taking in about 30 million euros in deposits only on mobile. Um, this is the story, in short, uh, of the first 20 months of, of Leo Vegas. Uh, we launched on the 11th of January uh, last year. Uh, we did so with uh, not one of the, actually the biggest mobile campaign ever to be done uh, in the Swedish market, uh, in collaboration with Aftonbladet, which is pretty much the, the biggest newspaper in, in the Swedish market. It took us only three months uh, and in May 2012, we reached our first million in deposits. Um, that's following summer. So this is last summer was when the first competitors started to arrive in the market. We actually had a few months for ourselves in the Swedish market, this is. Um, but they started arriving and we realized that we really need to do something special on the marketing side. And we do need to, to keep on going with our product as well um, because we want to stay ahead. So we started product development, and, and straight ahead, we also launched something on the marketing side, which we call the Spin Cube. I will sh show you that more in detail, but this was just amazing for the conversion rates. Uh, we, you know, we had rates of, of percentages in, in comparison with, with what we're used to from web, which is you know, 0, 0.0 something click-through. Um, Shortly afterwards, in November, we passed our second million in deposits. Um, in December 2012, we became EBITDA positive for the first month ever. Uh, we also launched our own game, uh, Mobile Skrapet, which is pretty much directly translated into the mobile scratch card. Now, this is quite a nice experience because you can scratch the card on your mobile phone, which is quite a step forward from, from PC, where you, know, you do it with a mouse or whatever. It hasn't really kicked off the, the PC thing, but, but on mobile, it makes so much more sense. Um, in March 2013, we launched this new version of our site that, I, that we started developing during summers. And we really took a huge step forward in the you know, speed of everything. And um, I'm going to again go into more detail, but um, this was a really big step forward. Uh, at the same time, we launched uh, Finland and Norway, uh, reached 3 million in deposits and, and 1 million in re revenue. Uh, in May, we, uh, we also launched Austria and Netherlands, and also quite a nice bracket in reaching 100,000 signed up customers. Um, so we also get recognized with, uh, with an award, which was the e EGR uh, uh, Operator Innovative Award. Um, obviously, great recognition for such a new company. Um, we reached 50 million in casino turnover, and in August, we passed 5 million in deposits. Now, I can't obviously show you all our numbers, but I have chosen to share at least our deposit rates, which I've already talked quite a bit about, uh, which pretty much should well, it pr pretty much shows very well uh, how quickly and um, amazing our growth has been. I know you're thinking we missed February, but that was a short month. So, but other than that, we're growing amazingly. <laughs> um, so, more about how we got here. Um, so, this, these are kind of the main points of our, our strategy. First of all, mobile, mobile first mindset. I know this is a buzzword, et cetera, et cetera, but Everything we do, we think mobile, and web will kind of follow. Uh, that works very well. It doesn't necessarily work the other way around, but if you put mobile first, uh, that works very well. Superior technology, we just put loads and loads of effort into it. Uh, I'll get more into detail. Uh, finally, the innovative marketing. I've already mentioned the Spin Cube, um, but I'll show it to you as well. Um, I couldn't help but uh, including this quote. Um, Leo Vegas is leading the way into the mobile future. This was said by GIQ Gaming Intelligence magazine uh, back in February. And um, it 
Well, it so well represents, uh, you know, what we want to stand for. Um, so yeah, talking about mobile raising the bar, um, by putting mobile first, we, we, we do the very best gaming experience in general. And the reason for this is that we have to prioritize speed so much. Um, obviously, we're dependent on, we can't you know, assume that people use Wi-Fi or whatever. We're dependent on a mobile net. So we have to optimize our product to absolute perfection. Obviously, this helps our whole business. This helps the, the web part of things as well. Um, there's been a lot of mentions about you know, the number of games, etc. I agree that you know, the, the best thing to do is to, to add a lot of game suppliers and share a pick. I do think that you should have a pretty, pretty broad set. Um, um, but, uh, but that is certainly driven from the mobile side of things as well. Um, fastest payments. So this is quite a challenge as well. I mean, obviously, we have to look around quite a bit to get these payment solutions that are secure and actually work on mobile, um, which is very much easier said than done. There's, there's more and more solutions coming up now, but this has certainly been a challenge, uh, but something that we've gotten very far with. Um, you do need a broad set, not necessarily for every single customer, but you do need it when you enter new markets. Um, finally, world-class support. So, well, this might go without, you know, this kind of goes without saying for any gaming company, but on the other hand, you have to consider when it comes to mobile that everyone carries their mobile phones with them at all times. So if you get back to a customer after 15 minutes, that actually makes a difference if it's a mobile customer. It doesn't necessarily make as much of a difference for a, for a web customer, but the whole mobile part of things just drives this so much forward. And if there's anything that people uh, hate more than, than waiting for a response from support, is, is waiting for their money. Uh, so that can never happen. And, and even less so for a mobile customer, who we will tell via an SMS. So it will matter if we do it in 15 minutes or 30 minutes. Um, so this just builds on slightly to, to the previous side. I'm um, not going to talk that much about our suppliers, but these are some examples. Um, so building the speed, we, we've actually done uh, the same thing as the, the previous speaker. We, we've uh, built on HTML5. And our main reasoning for that is just that it gives us so much more flexibility. Uh, we can build exactly what we want, uh, not necessarily what the App Store wants. Um, now. What's good, though, about a, a native app or, or an app store app, if you will, uh, is the usability and the user friendliness. So you do need to copy that. And you do need to try to achieve um, what you expect from, from a normal iPhone app. Um, what we also do is something that we call the single page technology. And what this, in short, means that we try to load as much locally on the mobile phone as possible. So we minimize the server request and pretty much all we ask our servers is, what's the result of this? Everything graphically and everything is already loaded locally, minimizing all the server requests and reduces the bandwidth uh, requirement, obviously. So about our marketing part of things. Well, we do television. Nothing new about that. But television has so much more opportunities when you do mobile because the second screen of the television is your mobile phone. It is quite ridiculous, but a lot of people actually, they're holding their mobile phones um, while watching television. Um, so this makes the, the marketing so much more effective uh, when doing mobile. Um, as you could see on the deposit rates, we did actually quite well during summers, uh, which is quite amazing. I mean, summer is a challenging period for, for the gaming industry. We did amazingly well. And I'll, I'd say that a large part of that was that we actually moved uh, our marketing over to channels that we know people use during summers. This includes, among other things, radio, where, well, you could hear about Leo Vegas, but also if you were watching radio, well, particularly in Sweden, actually, this summer, uh, you would have seen Leo Vegas Swedish mobile casino on pretty much the display at all times. Um, this is the spin cube that I mentioned uh, previously. Now, this is a recording, but what this is is that you swipe with your finger and you can watch several different games. Um, and obviously, what's really nice about this is, first of all, people love interacting with their mobile phones. Um, 
but, but also you get so much more marketing space. Uh, you, you pretty much get four times the marketing space that you're buying, uh, which obviously makes the channel very effective. Now, if you combine all of this, um, and buying impressions on mobile is certainly not cheap, but what we've managed to do is to actually acquire customers on mobile cheaper than on web, which is quite amazing. Well, dependent on the next step, because you might be asking yourself then, well, are they as valuable? Um, they're more valuable. Uh, so this is the cumulative value of our players uh, on mobile versus PC. And what you can see is that as much as they kind of start on the same value, uh, the mobile customers are so much more loyal and obviously have a very much higher lifetime value. Um, all of this equation obviously ends very well and uh, is a large contributor to, to our business doing very well. Um, what's next? Sorry, I couldn't help but using this picture. Um, so I'm not going to tell you too much detail, so I have to be a little bit secretive at this point. But what we are doing is that we, um, uh, we are developing the next, well, the next spin cube, if you will. It's not going to be a spin cube, but it's going to be something else uh, on the marketing side of things. Uh, and even more exciting, we're actually uh, within days um, entering one of uh, Europe's absolute biggest markets. Um, so this is just the beginning, pretty much. Um, with those last words, I'll leave it over to the audience. Thank you very much for having me. Any questions anywhere? Hi. Uh, you mentioned that you were able to collect one million in deposits in one month in Norway and Finland when you launched. Uh, you I think that was 3 million euros in deposits, but that was the total. Right. But how were you able to do, the, do that in those markets? I mean, Norway blocks money transfers and Finland doesn't let you advertise. Um, well, payment-wise, it's, it's certainly Norway that is the big challenge. Um, but yeah, there are solutions pretty much. That's, uh, you, you'd have to talk to my payment manager to, <laughs> to know the exact details. But yeah, there are solutions for Norway, as we, as we all know. There, there's many companies operating in that market, even though there is a payment ban. Finland is not particularly challenging when it comes to specifically payments, though. It's more on the marketing side of things. Thank you very much.